So, well, tell us about some of those good old days. So, uh, let's go back, because I know before you started with the Mouseketeers, you were a dancer already. Yes, right? yes, but um, I was under contract to Eddie Cantor. Do you know who that yes. is? Yes, I'm Ooh. familiar with Eddie wow. Cantor, but I don't know if this audience yeah. is. So, well, I don't know. Some people would like maybe. <laughs> when I was seven years old, I, um, Eddie Cantor had me under contract. Um, I worked on a show called the Colgate Comedy Hour, and once a month he was the star of the show. He had my legs insured for uh, $50,000. Wow. Um, when the way I got to Eddie Cantor is my dancing teacher asked me if I wanted to dance on TV, and I said, sure. <laughs> so uh, Eddie Cantor wanted two boys and two girls to dance on this little skit that they had going. So I went out and <coughs> auditioned. I was too short for the deal that they were doing, but they liked my dancing. So uh, they wrote a special part for me afterwards. And once the show aired, Eddie Cantor's attorneys called and um, said he wanted to sign me under contract. So. And how old were you at this time? Seven. Seven years old. Uh -huh. So when you started in Hollywood, uh -huh. in acting and dancing, how old were you? Well, I started dancing when I was three in Seattle. Oh. <clears throat> My parents would go square dancing, and I wanted to go dancing too. And they said, no, you're too young. And I said, well, little people can dance too. <laughs> so to shut me up, they said, you stay home um, with the babysitter, and uh, we'll take you to your own dancing lessons. So they took me to a dancing school in the neighborhood. And they had been rehearsing for a recital for six for the year, and it was going to be on in six weeks. So she said, you can sit and watch, and then in six weeks you can start taking. So I was watching and patting my foot. She said, you want to get up and try? Well, I got up and did it, and I was in the recital six weeks later. <laughs> so I was born dancing. <laughs> so, so, and then you went straight to Eddie Cantor, or did you do other productions as well? Oh, well, this, that was, um, um, that was in Seattle. Oh, yeah. And so I got a Little Miss Washington State. My dancing teacher had put me in a contest. So um, I went to California to compete for Little Miss USA. And I came in second. And so um, my dad liked the weather there better. He got tired of the rain up in Washington State. So we moved to California. And so that's how I got to Eddie Cantor, my dancing teacher in California sent me out. And that was your first gig was at the Eddie Cantor? <coughs> uh, I worked the Palomar Theater up in Washington State uh, with the Eddie Fox, <coughs> the Hoosier Hot Shots. I used to go perform at Fort Lewis and Fort Lawton. And uh, I'm told the faster the music went, the more I was laughing and loved it. And the soldiers would throw money and uh, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> And um, I did the film Artists and Models with Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Wow. And in the film, we uh, had to sing a song. And in those days, we had to pre-record at um, Capitol Records. So we went there <coughs> to pre-record the song we were doing. And Eddie Kent, um, <laughs> Jimmy Dodd was recording the session there. By, so he was doing a recording session there and saw me and recommended me to Disney Studios. Oh. So in that time, with all those productions from Eddie Cantor, so you started seven, and then? I was 12. You were 12 when, when I was in Mouseketeers. Yeah. So wow, so that was a lot of stuff that happened during uh -huh. that period of time. So, uh -huh. so the Mouseketeers, when you, what was that process like when you got the call and got recommended? Uh, I went out and uh, I think I had three different auditions. I remember I sang, I didn't know the gun was loaded. And did a, um, I had a dress. As That's a, a very popular kid song today. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a, a rope. I was dressed in western that, that I would spin and tap dance at the same time. And then I I'd take the rope down and jump rope and tap dance double time to the music. Um, so that's you know, my main audition. Yeah. Um, my agent didn't want me to sign with the Mouseketeers because I had built a little name for myself and, mm -hmm. and people would call and ask if I was available. Um, but I wanted to work at Disney. 
because I wanted to sing and dance every day. And um, shortly after I signed with Disney, RKO was uh, going to do the Shirley Temple story, and they called to see if I was available to play uh, Shirley Temple. But of course, I was Mickey Mouse Club, and I love it. So with the Musketeer, how many, do you know how many cases they called in or they looked at in that, in that process? Oh, there were tons. Yeah. There were just tons and tons and tons of kids. Yeah. And that was the beginning, kind of, I mean, the early 50s there. Mm -hmm. So of Walt going into television mm -hmm. and doing all of that. So did you kind of know what the Musketeers was going to become? No. Was well, the see, impact that was going to have? No, Walt Disney wanted us all to um, not be professional, just mm -hmm. like the kids next door. Um, there were a couple that I worked with before the Mickey Mouse Club. Nancy Abbott was on um, Bloodhounds on Broadway with me. And Lonnie Burr walked, worked with me on the uh, OK Comedy Hour. Mm -hmm. But um, no, we had no idea what the impact was going to be. It was, we didn't even know about Disneyland then. You know, Disney Studios was um, different than any other studio lot you could go on because you know, it was like, College or, or your, your home, there was grass, Mickey Lane, there, there were uh, Derby flowers, Drive. And, yeah, Derpy Drive. It was, you know, a lot different than the other studios that I had worked at. But uh, when Disneyland opened, we were already filming the Mickey Mouse Club, but it hadn't aired yet, so we didn't know if it was going to be a hit or not. Yeah. So. Um, but you guys were on the lot then when they were developing all those and building all those attractions and things on in the studio stages there. Yeah, we didn't see that too much though because we were busy when we were shooting. They had little red trailers, um, two of them, and uh, on each side there was a row of desks. And uh, Mrs. Seaman, God love her, what a wonderful teacher she was. She could only teach um, 10 kids at a time. She taught first through uh, 12th grade. Um, <coughs> so, uh, we didn't really see what was being developed because we'd go to school, um, you'd have to go 20 minutes at a time for it to count. And we'd have to go three hours, one hour lunch, and then they could uh, shoot for four hours. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you'd think with a schedule like that, once you went back to regular school, we'd be so far behind. We were so far ahead, it was just a breeze going yeah. back to school. Mm -hmm. Rehearsals and you guys were kind of very structured. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I know that there are some stories that you, you guys did How do you know bit. this? <laughs> <laughs> and what is it you know? <laughs> well, uh, let's hear what you have. What's your favorite memories? <laughs> What's your favorite memories? What's your craziest memories? You know. Um, well, let's see. The very first day of shooting, the first and second day, um, they let the mothers in on the set. Do you hear about that? Okay, they would let the mothers in on the set. Um, but after the third day, <laughs> they were banned from coming on the set. <laughs> yeah, exactly, they would be behind the cameras going. <laughs> and just get in the way of, of what was going on. So the mothers were, <laughs> were relegated to the um, uh, theater lobby where they were doing the <laughs> editing of, of the cartoons and movies and stuff. And they would crochet and um, play cards and um, be there for lunch. Now was your mom and dad, were they were they around? How, how supportive of they? I mean, I guess since you guys moved from Seattle down to Los Angeles, they must have been very supportive. Well, they moved, my dad moved because of the uh, weather. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he, that makes a lot of people move. He worked for, uh, um, Boeing yes. went up in Seattle, then uh, he went to Lockheed down in LA. So um, my mother was so shy, she had no intentions of uh, any show business. Um, my folks would say, if you want to do it, good. If you don't want to, that's fine too. So my brother did a little bit of acting. He didn't like uh, performing, uh, dancing or singing, but he, he was a little Good little actor. So your mom wasn't one of those proverbial stage moms sitting no. in the lobby with the other ones playing no. piano? Well, <coughs> was, we played pinnacle, but <laughs> all the mothers had to go. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say another one. Um, the first day Walt Disney came That's on. That's what I was going to say. 
the wall. Okay. He, um, we're at kids acting up, goofing around, jumping around, and someone said, you better cool it, there's uh, Walt Disney there. And he, he was in the back in uh, gray uh, work clothes, with paint all over him, like he in the paint department working with the guys, because um, he knew everyone by their first name. He would come in on the set uh, now and again, uh, very quiet, soft-spoken. Wonderful, wonderful man. Um, let's see, what else? Well, how was his relationship with the kids? I mean, was he, did he interact with you guys a lot, or was it just yeah. kind of every now and again? He, he wanted us to call him um, Uncle Walt, um, but of course we couldn't, because in those days, our, the adults were Mr. and Mrs., you know, out of respect. And to this day, we still call him Mr. Disney. told some of you this story. Um, they, the house where he was born in, mm -hmm. they uh, turned into a museum. In Chicago. Right. And uh, Bobby and I went back there. This is before it was completed. The outside was completed, but not the inside. And all the two by fours were there. And <clears throat> we got to sign on the uh, two by fours. And uh, I wrote, thank you, Uncle Walt. Mm -hmm. And so now it's, it's covered up and will go down to posterity, but that makes me feel good. 